What's up everyone, April Dunham here. I've got a lot of positive response from my desk reservation Power Apps template that I released a few weeks ago. So for this template Tuesday, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and address some of the questions that I've got as a result of that template. A lot of you had some specific questions around different features and enhancements that you wanted to add to the app and how to do it. So I thought I'd just make a video walking through some of the most commonly asked enhancements and show you how to do those. But first, Here's the intro. I'll start with an easier one. A lot of you have noticed that in the list template that's deployed, there's an active field that's in there, but that's not being used in the app. So one of the questions that I got from quite a few of you was, can we use that active field to show or hide certain desk if they're active or inactive? I included this active field, which is a number field, exactly for that purpose. So if you have a bunch of desk and some of them might be out of commission for one reason or another, you can toggle this to either zero or one in your SharePoint list. Zero meaning it's not active, one meaning it is active. And we can update the Power Apps template to accommodate for that and only let people book desks that are active. The first step to get this piece working is to fill out the active field in your SharePoint list itself, which you see I did here. But the second step is we need to make a small tweak to the Power App template. So you'll wanna to go to the Desk Select screen and look for the gallery available desk. And if we point that to the items property of the gallery and expand out the formula bar, we can add one additional filter in here. So the current filter is filtering out desks that don't have existing reservations, but we can come in right behind this not function and add two ampersands. And then we can say where and active equals one. So it's only going to return desk with an active status. So I'm gonna update my data source, do a little refresh since I filled in that data, making sure it gets the correct information. And you see instantly, as soon as I refresh that, it's reduced the amount of desk showing. So I only have desk two, three, five, and six available. And if we go compare that to our data source, two, three, five, and six were the only ones with an active field value of one. So that's a really straightforward and simple enhancement to add to this particular template. The next question that I got was, how can we allow multiple dates for a particular reservation? Because right now in the template, when you go in to make a reservation, you can only select a single date. So how can we allow someone to book a desk for say the entire week? Well, thankfully, this is also a relatively easy fix. So for this screen on the date selection screen, and the calendar piece, we're utilizing a component for that. And one of the features of this component is a custom property called select range, which is a Boolean. So if you select the calendar component on the date selection screen, you can toggle this from off to on. And now that will allow you to select a range of dates instead of just a single date. So if we click play on this, you see if I select the 17th, I can also select the 21st, and now it has all of those dates as the date range. So it's going to take the 17th as the start date and the 21st as the end date. The only other thing we have to do here is write out the end date that we selected in the calendar to a global variable so that we can do some additional logic to pass that into our data source. So if we go to the date selection screen and we look at the continue button and it's on select property, you'll see that we were setting a global variable called selected date to the calendar start date. So we can just do one more thing here. We can go right below this and set another global variable called selected end date and set it to our calendar one, which is our calendar component on the screen. And then we can do a dot and there's an end date property that's available to us in the component that we can call. So now that we have both of those, the start date and the end date captured, you see below that I'm setting two other global variables, a start time and an end time variable. And with that, I'm getting the date that I selected and formatting that so it's a date and a time value. So I need to make one more tweak, 
We can leave the start time alone, but for the end time, rather than pointing that to the selected date, we want to point that to our new selected end date global variable. Another thing that you'll need to change is on the desk select screen. We're showing the dates that you selected to find a desk in this label. So we'll want to update this. If we look at the labels text property, we need to change this last part. So this is the from and the to. we need to change instead of pointing to selected date, we'll point that to selected end date. So that then it will actually show the correct date range that you have selected. So if we continue walking through the process, we'll select this desk and continue. In this screen, you'll probably want to make one more tweak then. This is the confirmation screen. And right now we're only showing the start date essentially. So you'll want to kind of move this label that has the time down a little bit and expand this start date label. And instead of just having the selected date, we can copy this same formula do an ampersand so that we can add in some custom text here. We'll do a quote and just kind of separate this out with a hyphen. So we'll wrap that in quotes and another ampersand. And then we can paste in that same formula, just changing selected date to selected end date. Another trick here I can show you is if you want to have this each on two lines in the same label, you see how like the Friday is kind of showing right there. Well, right before, where you want the new line, you can use a special character called char 10, and that will force a new line break. So now it's gonna accurately show the range on the confirmation screen. And then if we click confirm, it gives us a success message. And if we go inspect our desk reservations list in SharePoint, we'll see a new reservation made for the 24th from 8 a.m. to the 28th to 5 p.m. And I'll just run through one more scenario so we can make sure that that desk is gone. So just to prove that it still works with the date range, desk five isn't an option anymore because there is a reservation made for that desk for that entire week. That leads us into our next question. And that's how do you allow people to book multiple desks at one time? So this would be a scenario that someone pointed out to where maybe you're reserving desk for an entire team of people. So you might want to reserve four or five desks at a given time for your entire team. So to do that, that's all going to happen here on the desk select screen. And we'll need to add in some additional logic, which will let us select multiple ones of these desks. And when we click continue, that will loop through, figure out which desk we have selected and write those out to the data source. So if we look at the template as it is right now, you'll see that we actually can select multiple of these desks. But the way it's coded right now, it's not going to write all of those out. So we need to add additional logic to accommodate for that. But we take a look at what's going behind the scenes. If we expand out our gallery available desk that's on the screen, and we select the checkbox that's on here, and click on the drop down in the properties pane and go to its on check property, you see that we're setting a global variable called selected desk to the selected item. So what's going to happen as it stands now is each time I select this, the selected item global variable will be updated with whatever the most recently selected desk that I have is. So if we need to allow for multiple of these, instead of setting one global variable, we need to set this into a collection that we can then loop through. So what we're going to do is we're going to comment out this set function and we will replace that with a collect, we'll call this selected desk plural, and we'll point that to this item. So now each time we click that, it's going to add the selected item into a collection. Now if we uncheck one, we need to accommodate for that as well. So let's copy this collect function, change this property drop down to the on uncheck. And you see here we were setting that global variable to blank, but we can comment that out and we can use the remove function, which allows us to remove an item from a collection. So we can say remove from selected desk this item. So if we uncheck, it removes it from the collection. Now that we have our collection, we need one more piece of additional logic in the button that actually writes this back out to our data source. 
That's not this continue button because all this does is takes us to a confirmation screen, as you can see there. But that's actually happening here on our confirm button on the confirm screen. Now we can see we have an error now on this button. And if we expand out the unselect of the button, we'll see that's because it's relying on the selected desk property that we just commented out. So this is where we need to make the change so that it patches this correctly. So we're going to kind of leave this patch here, but we're going to add something above it. So what we can do if we need to essentially loop through all of the items in that collection and for each one, write out to our data source that that particular desk is reserved with the given dates. To loop through a data source, we can use a function called for all. If we type for all, put an open parenthesis. So in this case, we want to for all through our selected desk collection and get each of the selected desk. Then when we're in that for all, we want to patch a new record with that selected desk information. So we can leave our patch there and we'll just add in like I did a closing parenthesis. And we still get an error because we just need to change some mapping in this formula. So instead of on desk text, having it point to selected desk dot title, just change that selected desk to this record dot title. Because that will get the current record in the loop of the for all. And that's really all we need to change in this. You'll notice we have one more error here in this label where we're showing the information of the desk that you have selected. So let's change this. And since we have potentially multiple desks, we can use another function called concat. And with concat, we can point that directly to our selected desk collection. And we can take the title from that and we can separate that out with a comma. So this will loop through our collection, get the title of the desk and separate that out, split it out with a comma. So I'll show you what that looks like. We'll just walk through a test scenario. I'm going to book a new reservation. Let's say from the second through the fourth, I'll do these three desks, click continue. And you see there's that concat in action. So I selected desk five, three, and six, and it has those separated out with commas. And now if I click confirm, this should be doing the for all in my patch. And I should see those different reservations for each desk. And if I can go back to my data source, let's just confirm. And there are the three desks that I reserved from the second to the fourth, all done in that one patch. Those were by far the three most common questions slash enhancement requests that I've received for this particular template. If you have any more feature enhancement requests or questions about this template or any other templates that I've created, drop a note in the comments. And if you have suggestions for future templates, let me know as well. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.